Welcome back, everyone. Our next speaker is going to talk to us about the delicate subjects of relationships and sexual health. So let's welcome Mr. Empty Hero. Well, hey, everybody. It's the group pile Empty Hero. And today, we're going to talk about love. Now, there is all kinds of love. There is a love a man has for a woman. There is a love a woman has for the things a man owns. And the love that only a man can have with a rubber glove stuffed with piping hot grape jelly. Now today's story is going to go back, way back, back into time to the year 2005. This story begins on my last day of boot camp and ends on my first day of military technical school. Now there is an urban myth about boot camp. People believe that there is a substance called saltpeter that they put in the water that makes your pecker stop working. Now that is just wrong. That is silly. They don't put saltpeter in the water to make your pecker stop working. They put it in the Gatorade. And I remember sitting in my bunk at night going, Come on, dick. Come on, I know you can do it. I believe in you, dick. Rise like Lazarus at the behest of Jesus Christ. Rise like the Mary Ellen Carter slipping above the waves that threatened to dash her to her destruction at the bottom of the sea. Rise like the Challenger shuttle slipped the surly bonds of earth to touch the face of God. But there was nothing. But I was kind of okay with it. I had to focus on memorizing important things like how to fold a shirt, the circumference of a master sergeant's hat, and how to knock somebody off of a block with a gigantic Q-tip. But on my last day of boot camp, I knew I wouldn't have to do any strenuous exercises. I was just going to get a coin, have somebody say congratulations you graduated, and then I was going to be my whole day. So breakfast, lunch, dinner, I did not touch the Gatorade. And before lunch was over, I could feel a transformation taking place. Suddenly, I had a rocket in my pants. It was flying me all over base. I was running around crotch first, shoulders back, arms behind me like that retarded kid from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. And I remember sitting in my bunk that night with 50 other boys around me, sitting in their bunks, waiting for the 3 o'clock bus to come. And I hatched a devious plan. I thought to myself, hmm... If I roll onto my side, they'll never know the juice is coming loose. Now, I didn't even have time to conjure up a woman or to think about something sexual. I touched the tip of my peni with my thumb, and I just want you to imagine a bathtub floating in space above you, filled to the brim with piping hot mayonnaise. And the bunghole on this imaginary bathtub is the circumference of a basketball. And somebody suddenly unplugging that bathtub and gallons! Piping hot tons of red hot man mayonnaise, man marmalade, that stinking steaming hot mamma jamma come a shoot loose all through the atmosphere, all through the universe. Little Japanese people running from the coast in fear as the tsunami of cum comes flying towards them. Aliens in space were going, oh my goodness, a nuclear war has started. Look at that mushroom head. But no, that was just the head of my penis. And six weeks of backed up jisms comes the falling out of my body. And after that's gone, my body's like, shit, we're still going. It takes all the piss out of my bladder. It takes all the spaghetti and meatballs out of my tummy. And all the looking juice from my eyeballs. And I'm sitting there looking like a humanoid anchovy. And I pass out. And hours go by. And around 3 a.m. someone taps me on my shoulder. And they go, Empty Hero, get up. The bus is here. It's time to go to our new base. And they're trying to pull the blanket off me, but it's stuck. And I hear a sound like Velcro tearing apart. And the blanket comes off me with a... <laughs> and I'm screaming because every hair on my stomach and nipples is ripped clean. And my friend goes, what the fuck? And he flings the blanket against the wall where it is stuck to this day. And the walls start bleeding like in a horror movie. But instead of blood, it's my disgusting man juice. And I was so embarrassed until I looked at the walls and I realized there was 12 other blankets slung up. I was like, okay, fuck it. We got on the bus. And it was a long drive from Lackland Air Force Base all the way to Biloxi, Mississippi. And about five hours into the drive, we stop off at some shitty diner. And they bring us the 3 o'clock in the morning special, which is eggs from a can, muffins from a can, and bacon from a jar. 
And as I'm eating it, I feel a chemical combustion taking place in my stomach, as if I was an alchemist creating some kind of horrific chain reaction. And I feel my body going, yes, eggs, we can take protein from that and turn it into cum. And my belly's going, yes, more bacon, I can take that bacon grease and use it to lubricate your van's deference while everything else turns into cum. And the muffins, well, that was just some old nasty shit when it came out. But before I was done eating, I was already reloaded. And my body was like, okay, we got rid of 15 gallons before, but we just made five more. And suddenly I'm looking around and realizing, oh, hey, that 90-year-old waitress, she's looking pretty good. I bet you could pop them teeth out and gum my balls something nice. Oh, shit, that photograph of Annie Oakley, I might just peel that off the wall and take that for my own use in the bathroom in about a minute. Now I know what you all thinking. Andy Hero, you are a disgusting man. Why are you telling us all about this? Well, it's to set up what happened the following day. We get back on the bus. We drive for another 10 hours. We get to Keesler Air Force Base in Biloxi, Mississippi. And I get out and suddenly I realize, <laughs> there's women on this base. They let us sleep until about noon. And then we had a meeting with all the other students on that base, including the ladies. Now, as luck would have it, when they called our names and made us sit in our assigned seats, I was sandwiched between my roommate, whose guts I hated, because in boot camp, I was a child runner and he was a child runner. And the problem that created was if I did a good job as a child runner, his entire group had to wait 20 minutes before they could eat and they'd have less time to eat when they finally got their turn. And if he did a good job as a child runner, the same thing would happen to me. But on the other side of me was this beautiful woman. She had hair like a flowing river of gold, eyes like precious gems, lips that even light was wont to touch. Not just kissable, but admirable. A slender neck that tapered down to beautiful milky white shoulders and bosoms as though they had been shaped by the hands of God. And I looked at her, and she looked at me. And I felt a spark pass between us, and she took a pen, and she kind of put it in her mouth and pulled it out a little bit, and then put it back in, and said, Hey, want to get your dick sucked? <laughs> and I went, <laughs> Yes! Yes, I want to get my dick sucked! And my roommate, whose guts I hated, and who hated my guts, pokes me on the shoulder and goes, Hey, man, what the fuck are you doing? And I look at him like the idiot he was, and I say, Shut the fuck up, man. I'm about to get my dick sucked. So me and this beautiful woman... We start chatting. And I don't really remember what she said because she's a woman. None of it was important. I was just thinking, I'm going to get my dick sucked. I'm going to get my dick sucked. Bloopity, bloopity, bloop, blup. Going to get my dick sucked. Hey, and we have our lunch break. And they break us up into two units. And unfortunately, that beautiful woman was not in the unit that got sent to lunch with me. And as I'm going through the line at the commissary, people are coming up to me and going, Hey, man, you know, we get that you're funny. But a joke is a joke, and you might be taking it a little bit too far. And I go, what the fuck is everybody talking about? And they go, man, that girl you've been chatting up, she's ugly as hell. What the fuck are you doing playing games with her heart? And I go, excuse me? That beautiful divine goddess with whom even the angels are at the mercy of the palpitations of their beating heart? That sultry signification that God does exist, and he indeed does love mankind who is so wonderful and delightful and said she's gonna suck my dick. And all these men, they tell me, look man, I've been at boot camp for a long time. You've been at boot camp for a long time. How many times have you busted a nut since boot camp? And I say, shit, I only busted a nut once the entire time. They went, well, God damn it, there's your problem, boy. And one of these slick motherfuckers reaches into his book bag and he's like, look man, Right here, I got this. It's called Harry Asian Muff Magazine. <laughs> and he gives me this magazine of these fat old Japanese women with these gigantic hairy pussies. I don't know whether to fuck them or to slide my foot in and go walk around the house smoking a pipe. And I'm like, you boys are crazy. You're out your mind. I'm not going to go in the bathroom and jack off to some nasty old Asian lady porn. And then he's like, okay, well, I got this midget magazine right here. I'm like, Shh, midgets? Well, okay, and I go back to my dorm room, and I don't even look at that magazine much. I'm thinking of that beautiful, blind, bodacious babe who wants to bathe my bulbous penis betwixt her lips. And good lord, that first load was terrific. The second load was the plug of all the dried up shit that was left over from the first one. 
I shot divots in the tile wall of my standing shower. It was like a pitching machine was shooting a thousand ping pong balls at the speed of light. And they're pouncing off the wall and pouncing me and I'm going, ah, ah, ow, ooh, ow, ooh, 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 ooh. So anyway, I get out of that shower. And I get back to the commissary. And we go back to orientation. And I get back in my seat. And next to me is my roommate on one side. And I'm waiting for that beautiful blonde girl to come back. And I look over. And there's this like this, this creature sitting in her seat. And I'm like, excuse me, creature, but the beautiful blind woman who I was talking to earlier sits here. You need to go back to whatever mud hole it is you crawled out of because I ain't got no time for you or your clutch of eggs. And she opened her mouth to speak and her voice came out. And I was like, wait a second. That's the voice of the beautiful blind woman. What the, what the fuck? And now that I was looking at her with my eyeballs and not my gigantic swollen testicles. I realized she did not have beautiful blonde hair. She had the kind of haircut that a 50 year old woman has where they cut it off just below the ear. And what I imagined as being shining golden locks on her shoulders, well that was just the fluorescent lighting reflecting off of her dandruff. And those beautiful eyes that I had imagined. Sure, one of them looked nice, the one that was looking at me, the other one that was staring off into space at a 45 degree angle, I could have done without that one. Lips that I longed to kiss resembled overcooked hot dogs that had split. Her teeth stuck out of her mouth further than her lips. Them bosoms that I had imagined was merely the bagginess of her uniform, which was bunched up all around her back, culminating in a ridiculous pantsuit wedgie, which, as I was looking at her, she slowly dug out, then brought her hand around her mouth and breathed in her own bountiful bouquet of biohazardous booty bullion. And I suddenly looked over at my roommate, whom I hated and who hated me, and I said, thank you. Thank you. I mean, I still let her suck my dick. <laughs> but I didn't. Nobody knew about it. <laughs> so I guess the moral of the story is that love may be a many splendid thing. But lust is an all corrupting force. You must eliminate it from your body by blowing it down the throat of homely women whom you'll say you'll call. But you never do. Thanks for your time and goodbye. Wow. Uh, thank you, Empty Hero, for that enlightening talk about relationships. Uh, you can all find him on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook. His links are all going to be included below. You can buy his audiobooks on iTunes and Audible. His newest one is out right now. It's called Europe 2, Barack's Apocalypse. I... <laughs> Seriously. It oh oh don't leave. Oh come on. I think I think we can have a really good discussion about the the new looks that we 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 uh oh bye. Yeah, I th I think that went well.